Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, 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 I that, like, that's good. You guys are going. All right. Me. Let's get Josh in here, wherever he is. He might be online. Dirk and I had some big yeah. conversations. <laughs> He's um family vacation. Oh, Excuse me. There he is. Hi, Josh. Hey, Marion. Hey, Brittany. Oh, okay, good. You can hear us. There's Amy. Mike, are you going to share? Which one is it again? Uh, Apple. Virgil's. Not Virgil's. <laughs> Zoom room or Apple TV? Apple TV. All right. When, when we're ready, I'll. Are you there. ready? Can we move on? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Next is approval of the agenda. What? Peter? Peter. Oh. We lost him on the way. <laughs> There's our Maybe Peter. Maybe took a shortcut. <laughs> Did you really? <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, stop. <laughs> stop. That was my idea, Peter. <laughs> All right, now that we have everyone here, we have Josh here. Um, motion, or could I have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 And Josh is giving us an aye. Okay. Next is minutes of the previous meeting. Could I have a motion to accept the minutes of the previous meeting? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 And Josh is an aye. Next is communications. Do we have any communications from anyone? Nothing. Okay. Next takes us to our first open session. As per board policy 1512, we hold two open sessions. The first session is limited to comments on agenda items for tonight's meeting. The board welcomes attendance and participation by district residents, people having business within the boundaries of the school district and people who do business with the Board of Education. Speakers must be at least 16 years of age and will be limited to three minutes. Please preface your comments with your name, address, group affiliation if appropriate. Non-district residents must include the name of their business or how they do business. All speakers in this open session must state which agenda item they are speaking on. Any takers? Freedom. I 
do have some reservations at the top that I talked about. Thanks. No one else. Next is unfinished business. There is none, and this takes us to the superintendent's report. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Jason. So tonight we are going to start with our with Miss Wilson um, reviewing our three through eight assessment data, and I will get that up on the screen right now. Good evening, everyone. There we go. So I'm excited to be here tonight to share with you um, the Sweet Home Academic Achievement Report for grades three through eight ELA and math assessments. So we're gonna be looking at different points of views. We have this data sliced and diced in a million different ways. Um, so we have a presentation today, but there's, if there's questions, there's, there's more we can pull. Um, next steps, um, after we've reviewed where we are with this data, what, what are we planning to do to continue to go from good to great? Next slide. So we jump right into ELA proficiency at the elementary level. So this would be grades three through five for us. And what you see here is a five-year look. I know you only see four bars. Or you gotta remember that 2020 was canceled so that there's nothing there to report. And um, there's a couple of things I wanna point out about this slide. You'll see it repeated when we look at different points of views, but this method will be repeated. 2019 was the last real administration of the New York State ELA in math before the pandemic. We know the pandemic hit, we lost that year of 2020. 2021 is not a reliable year. It's here because we wanna make sure we still look at that data, but we have to keep in mind that it was only one session over in one day when typically the test is two sessions over two days. And that test also had previously released items. So the students had time to practice on those. And that's not typical of the New York State three through eight. So that year is an anomaly and the data is not as reliable. So if you really wanna get a good look at how we're doing at ELA um, with the elementary schools, you wanna look at a comparison from 2019 prior to the pandemic to 2022 coming out of the pandemic. And as you can see, we're at 44% prior to and we're at 44% coming out of. So in thinking about that and the things that happened during the pandemic, that's, that's a point of view that we need to keep in mind. Next slide. So here, that last slide was just proficiency. That's just our threes and fours added together, right? Here, it, you would see the breakdown of all of the levels. Levels one, two, three, and four. And again, 2020 is not there. The comparison of 2019 to 2022 really gives you your best look. And what you see there is the balancing act. The reason why the number remained consistent from 2019 to 2022, we had an increase of level ones, which does impact our overall index score. And that's the place where you really wanna look at a decrease. But we saw a decrease at level two and level three, but then an increase at level four in 2022. So in the end, it balanced out in comparison to 2019. Next slide, please. Now this is an interesting look. Um, so what, what we wanted to do here was kind of give you a sense across the board at every level without doing multiple slides. So you can see it all at once. This, these are all of our elementary schools. And at the bottom, you see all of the averages for the district. So that last portion there, elementary averages, you see grades three through five and then the three through five average for the district for levels one, two, three, four, and proficiency. As you look at the schools, we wanted to give a breakdown in each one of those areas. So the green represents either better than or equal to the district average. Now keep in mind that at levels one and two, you want to be low. You want to be lower than the district average. So when you're green there, you should be lower than what the district average is at that level. At levels three, four, and proficiency, you wanna be higher. 
you want, that's where you want all the students to, to be in those levels, the three, four, and, and of course, proficiency. And so you see uh, the green there is higher than the district average. So this is just a comparison to our own district average among our schools. And so the, the idea here is that you wanna see as much green as possible. And you see elements of things we can share across schools because there's green in each one of the schools and there's things going on in each one of the schools that will help us um, as we share and enjoy and, and, um, and really take part of the professional development that will support the entire district. Next slide, please. Middle school. So when we dig into ELA for middle school, this is proficiency again. Remember I said this slide would repeat. And so again, a comparison of 2019 to 2022 gives you your best look, pre-pandemic, post-pandemic. And you see there was a 3% decrease in proficiency. Coming out of the pandemic, again, keeping in mind the things that happened during the pandemic and a 3% decrease in proficiency. Next slide. The middle school results in ELA. So here we have the breakdown of ones, twos, threes, and fours. Again, remember we, those ones and twos, we want to shift to three and four, and one is, is the place we don't wanna be. And so we don't wanna see any increases at level four. If you look at level, excuse me, at level one, we wanna see increases in level four for sure. <laughs> at level one, as you compare 2022 to 2019, you see we had a decrease in level ones, a slight decrease, an increase of level two, so that there may have been some shifting from one to two, pretty much stays, um, stayed the same in, in, in level three and a decrease slight by three percentage, just under three percentage points um, at level four. So that gives you just that 3% difference overall in averages. Next slide. So here's a look, similar to what we did with the elementaries, it's just that we have one middle school, so there's, they are the district average. And so you see how we did across the board at levels one, two, three, four, and proficiency across six through eight, and then the averages. Next slide. So as we discussed earlier in the year when we dug into um, high school graduation rates, and looking at subgroups and comparing performance. We took some time to really dig deep into the subgroups and looking at how we perform and um, where we are disproportionate and where we um, should be having our focus. And so as you look at this slide, it is proficiency by subgroup. And you see you have the four years there. You have all students. Now remember this, so this is a combination of um, elementary and middle together. You have all students and then the breakdown of the major subgroups for Sweet Home. And the ones that jump out, students with disability, English language learners, economically disadvantaged, black students and Hispanic students. Going deeper, as we look at um, our subgroup of economically disadvantaged growing significantly over the last few years, we're into the mid fifties. Um, as far as that percentage, go on to the next slide. We wanted to dig deeper into what does that mean? Because I believe it was discussed last time we dug into data like this, that students can, can be in multiple groups. And so this gives you kind of a, that look at how economically disadvantaged cuts across all of the subgroups. So we're looking for disproportionality, right? So as we start off with all students at the top, and this is proficiency, economically disadvantaged versus not economically disadvantaged. And you see there's a huge gap between 57% of not economically disadvantaged and um, economically disadvantaged, only 32% of our students um, proficient. And if you take that look, going down to take females next, as you look at the female student population, it's now broken down into that 40% are students who are female and also economically disadvantaged. So you see, as you go down the, the list here, um, female, male, black, white, general, general education students, students with disabilities, not English, not English, non-English language learners and English language learners, you see that disproportionality across the board. So what does that say to you? 
that that group, that subgroup of economically disadvantaged stands out because it cuts across pretty much every single subgroup and our efforts being focused on how we support students across the board who are surviving poverty, poverty is uh, will support and lift our district and continue our efforts of going from good to great. That DEI initiative becomes really important here because as you can see, it comes up across the board. Next slide. So this is, so this is a, a slide that really digs into the first ring districts. There are 10 districts here, including Sweet Home. And the only thing we really have in common um, in, across these districts is our location. We all sit outside of Buffalo, around Buffalo. When you look at the demographics across these districts, we're all very different. It's very hard to compare us, but because we are, we do share that location, it happens pretty regularly. So I thought I would share the breakdown of these 10 districts and how they play out. And I've sliced and diced pretty much everybody's um, social economic groups across these districts um, to, to get a sense for Sweet Home is very unique compared to um, the, the other nine districts. But you see the breakdown there and where we compare. Next slide. Now we're digging into math at the elementary level. And so you start to see um, a little more of that impact of the pandemic coming up in math. So again, it's the five-year look, um, 2020 is not there. And the comparison of 2019 to 2022 is the best comparison because we still have that unreliable data in 2021. And as you can see, if we compare from 2019 to 2022, we have a 7% gap. We had a decrease of seven percentage points of proficiency. Next slide. So here you see more of the detail of why, what happened, where the seven points kind of shifted. And so again, if you look at 2019 as compared to 2020, um, you can see we had a significant increase in level ones. We went from 26.8% of level one in 2019 to 34.4. And there was a decrease across the board um, in all the other areas in 2019. So at level two, levels three, and level four also decreases, adding to that 7% overall. Next slide, please. So here's that look again, but from a point of view of math, where we look at the elementary schools to um, compare across um, the elementary schools. And, and again, just like the first ring districts um, who we all have in common that we sit outside of Buffalo, but we are all very different. Our elementary schools are all very different too. Um, so we, we have to keep that in mind that it really is like comparing apples to oranges, but at the same time, what does it look like? So here we have the elementary averages at the, at the bottom, grades three through five, broken down, and then you see the average across three through five for the district. And green is where you want to be, is in comparison to the district average. Levels one and level two, you want those to be much, you want them to be lower than the district average and levels three, four and proficiency higher. And again, where you see the green, those are opportunities for us to share across um, different schools. Next slide. Middle school proficiency in math. Again, that 7% comes up again. Right, so if we look at the comparison of 2019 to 2022, you see that uh, decrease of seven percentage points. And there's more to this story that we will unpack with the middle school uh, assessments as we go to the next slide. So here you have the breakdown of levels one, two, three, and four. So you can see some of the shifting, right? And um, at level one, we had an increase Again, um, at level one, going from 32.4% to 39.9% um, in 2022, and uh, decreases in the other areas or e even remaining the same, about 26% at level three. So overall, coming up with that 7% um, 
decrease. But there's more to this on the next slide. As we look at the um, snapshot of the results for middle school, you see a breakdown of six through eight, and then you have eight, the six through eight averages, but there's another assessment there, algebra, because students in eighth grade are able to take the high school regents algebra course. If you take that course, you do not take the eighth grade test. So you are not counted in those numbers. So you see here how all of our eighth graders performed across the board um, from levels one, two, three, and four, and then proficiency. And so you see there's that, there's that big jump at algebra um, and then that, that whole, you know, how do we pull more students into that in that possibility and, and provide the right supports so that we get more students um, actually coming out of middle school ahead and uh, more likely to head off to that advanced regions through the algebra. Next slide. So the same look around um, the subgroups. Um, this is the three through eight, the full look, um, the five years and all of our subgroups, but the same subgroups show up again. Um, students with disabilities, English language learners, economically disadvantaged, black and Hispanic. And as we go into the next slide, you see that again, economically disadvantaged shows up um, as an area of disproportionate um, performance for us. And so that work around uh, DEI and everything that we're doing to support students who are surviving poverty will cut across all of the different subgroups because here you see the gap at all students, female, male, Hispanic, Asian, white, gen ed students, students with disabilities, not English, English learners, I always stumble there, <laughs> and English learners. Next slide. So here is that same look of the 10, of the 10 districts from before. Uh, they're reshuffled because they're in order, right? And you can see that we, last time we were closer to the top, here we're more in the middle as we compare to our, um, our neighbors. Uh, but again, the only thing we really have in common is our location. And um, we really, there, there, are, there are vast differences. For example, the percentage of students surviving poverty is much higher in Sweet Home than many of these districts. Next slide. So as we get into how we shift to supporting um, what we need to do to go from good to great, right? Because uh, we, we have some really great things going on here in Sweet Home. How do we capitalize on them and continue to grow? I think the DEI initiative is a cornerstone to that work and, and will provide the fabric that will drive our strategic plan. Um, but you see here some other things that um, we just high level things, of course, it's not everything, but the multi tiered systems of supports um, to ensure meaningful and manageable structures and components are all in place. So we want school wide screening assessments, um, clearly articul articulated tiered services delivered daily, um, progress monitoring and data teams, and everything that's relevant to literacy and math and the needs of our students. I saw this in action. Um, I, I, I I have the wonderful job of being able to go out and visit our schools um, for long periods of time. So I can sit in on those data meetings. And so I actually witnessed a, a data meeting for a half of a day and then came back the following week and saw the work from that meeting in action in the classroom the following week. So this work is at the, at the forefront in all of our schools. Continue to expand responsive teaching practices, uh, making instructional adjustments for groups and individuals. The intervention groups um, that happen all throughout the day, again, not just um, last week, not just this week, but all throughout the year. I've witnessed that today. I saw it in action again. Um, the intervention groups in place and data at the core of that work and driving how we organize to support students. Engage in curriculum reviews to for both ELA and math, and so we've in, we've engaged our leaders in that discussion of you know what what do we need to do to go on to the next level, um, what is the best thing for our students, and how what's, how how will we roll out that plan over time that really supports the teachers' professional development and knowledge 
and instructing what's going on in the classroom to best support our students. And then at the elementary level, a strong focus on foundational skills and understanding literacy and math and, promote, and promoting reasoning and critical thinking. So these key, key areas are at the core of the work. Again, DEI all woven throughout that. And this is also helping to drive the discussion that flows right into the strategic plan. I will take any questions. I have a couple, sorry. Um, first question, do you know, has there been any change in the scoring or the scaling um, from 2019 till, to last year? Uh, change in the scoring of the scaling. Like, uh, uh, you know, certain percentages, like, because I know it's scored out of what, like six something or. So the kit. So is there, has, been, has there been any change in scaling for what a four is, what a three is, what a two is. So the cut scores are set every year based on performance. And so it's some it's some magical thing that happens. State in formula. Albany. Okay, and then, Thank uh, you. That's, that's all you had to say, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it really is based on performance mm -hmm. um, and how, how the students respond across the state to certain items. Yeah. Uh, my next question is, uh, I'm sure you have this, and I don't know how much work it would be for you, um, but to get a breakdown of each of the scoring. So, like, I know I got my my daughter's recently, so she was like a three in math, but she was closer to the proficient line mm -hmm. than she was to a four. Mm -hmm. So be interested to see how many, like, twos are close to that three line, or are we are most of our twos closer to the one line? Just curiosity on my part. Yep. For that. So that's that's work that I was just having a conversation with the principal yesterday around the focus around do you get to the twos that right up that are right at the cut score of ready to move to three? What happens if the focus is there to the students who are close to the one or in the one category? The movement of of, of a student from one to three it's a massive move. It it doesn't it rarely happens. Um, very, very quickly, it, it happens over a period of time. So definitely, we we have that information. Yeah. And my last is actually just a comment, um, and this is a long way off. It's about four and a half years away. But I'm really interested to see what the impact of the UPK is going to have yes. on when these kids get to third grade that they're a year extra in school and that they're fingers crossed, have a non-interrupted four years of schooling. <laughs> oh um, I, I'm just, I'm interested to see what the impact is down the road of the UPK. Yes. Um, you know, I know that's five years away before they take a third grade test, but. Absolutely. Um, so, thank, thank you. you. I got another, I, kind of a thought or a question, I guess it isn't a question thing format here, but I, I'm looking, at, I'm looking at these things, and obviously we, we, the people who are economically disadvantaged seem to be, in general, lower, although there's a couple of, a couple of things that, were, that fit out of the, dropped out of the categories. But I'm curious if we're looking at not just the assessment data, but can we tie that back to other things, like are they missing more school? Are they, um, you know, are they missing meals? I mean, things like that. So, I mean, because... I mean, then it all doesn't necessarily come down to just the teaching. Maybe there are other things we need to be working on too that would affect that that are non-classroom things. Yes, what you're what you're speaking of is um, the multi-tiered systems of support that um, the schools are all working to make sure that they have these indicators. So it it, it goes beyond um, how students are performing academically. We pull in the social emotional piece. We pull in the attendance piece, the the behavior, um, everything and anything we can to pull in multiple data points to get at what is at the core of what's going on with every single student. So yes, um, that, that is the work that the schools are deeply involved in coming out of the pandemic more so than ever, the social emotional piece. Yeah. Cool, thank you. Is that something, so as you talk about uh, addressing changes in the curriculum, is that something that gets like baked into the curriculum, the social emotional multi, I'm sorry, MTSS, um, does that get, into the actual instruction of, 
of how we'll be teaching math and literacy? So there's multiple ways that um, we have it actually being played out right now. And I see that expanding. Um, so right now it plays out in certain classes. Um, for example, health classes at the middle school and at the high school. Um, but there are also opportunities to provide like advisory type settings where um, the teachers have that opportunity to work more closely with kids through the restorative process. So I, I met with a principal today who our meeting was delayed and because she was working through a restorative process with some students who had some things that bubbled up that weren't necessarily academic, but impacted their ability to be focused on academics. And so you see that playing into everything that the principals are doing and, and their staff, everyone across the school communities um, to support our students. What, how I see that be, um, becoming more structured is um, looking at actual an actual curriculum for the social emotional part where there, there, it exists out there. There are some out there. We have some that are actually being rolled out at the middle school and the high school. Um, one that we're looking at um, piloting to bring on on top of that. So there's definitely more out there that we can do to make it a lot more structured. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Just have a couple of quick things. Um, you bring a fresh set of eyes to this district. You've been here a few months. Did any of this data surprise you? Um, it, it looks a lot like the high school um, data. Um, and I, I know that, and, and many of you know that I have something on the side that both Mr. Genestri and I are working on. And that is a part of, that is an, an, an important part of that work. My whole focus is on supporting students surviving poverty. So I think it is, a, it has been um, put under a spotlight even more coming out of the pandemic for everyone beyond Sweet Home. So I'm not surprised um, because uh, the pandemic really hit our world, our country, our community very hard. And economically, we're still feeling that in some places. And so that plays out with, with that category becoming more and more an increasingly growing category for us. And while we're, I just, we've always, you know, we, we've always tried to have a focus and I hate to call them the ones and twos, but as we continue to help nurture those kids up, there's also a focus on the higher level kids that we're trying to push. And it kind of surprised me that they're kind of leveled off and, and just not. And I know our staff is working hard. Are there any areas of celebration in here? Oh, yes. Because I really want to kind of bring that out to light too, because our staff works really hard. And I think we all need some of the, yeah. the little celebrations in here too. So could you comment on those? Uh, well, I, I hope I did celebrate some things with the, <laughs> with the greens and, and, um, and the places where I felt like, you know, we didn't have any, there's, there's very little slide from pre-pandemic to post-pandemic. Um, so th those are definitely celebrations. Um, I think, and, and going back to the middle school with the um, algebra, um, you, remediation is no longer the way to support students. It's acceleration and provide the support. So that, that whole shift of the students taking the algebra and, you know, how do we get more, you know, getting more students. The middle school has significantly increased the number of students who are um, able to take part in that, in that, um, in that algebra level course. Um, the classes are full. And they went from one section um, in previous years to three sections, three classes, um, and looking to grow. So, actually, yeah. and I would tag on to that that you know when we're looking at the data between um, pre-pandemic and post-pandemic, mm -hmm. to see that there's no slide, huge slide, right? You know, there's no yeah. right. We're we're pretty even in that you know. They talk a lot about all the things that kids lost. In our district, we were able to, to give them enough to maintain. We will grow and we will fix, but we at least maintained. Our kids didn't backslide. Right. And, and I think that's something, you know, from the whole presentation, that is something to be celebrated for yes. sure. We have a so, lot of kids that opted out or can you opt out from this? They did. Well, we, you can opt out. Okay. Um, so I wonder how that statistically would affect our numbers. You know, and I have the, I have those numbers and I, I, we, 
we didn't put it in the presentation, but we have we have like 200 slides. <laughs> um, so I didn't think we wanted to see 200 slides. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, but I can say that um, the opt out was about the same as normal um, is what we typically have. The middle school is still the highest highest place where the where you see the biggest number of opt outs. Are we talking like 10, 20? Mm. At the at sixth grade, there were in ELA there were twenty nine, and um, sixth grade, uh, seventh grade there were sixty five, eighth grade there were sixty four. The numbers always grow when you get to math because ELA comes first, and by the time you get to math, they're like, "Wait, you, you didn't know. take that? I'm not going <laughs> to take it." <laughs> yes. yeah. And so, our elementary kids, the elementary at grade three in ELA, um, sixteen across the entire district. Um, fourth grade, 19, um, fifth grade, 33. How much student? student so the numbers are much bigger at the middle school. For the number of kids yeah. across yeah. four schools. Yes. So there were a few, so it's getting better at, um, and we still have to chip away at it, um, you know, and work more on the middle school grades. Um, they, we'll continue to work on that. Yeah. Anybody else? Could we suspend, could I have a motion to suspend rules for a question? Wait, we gotta get a motion. I'm, I'm looking at my, make sure it's okay. Well, well it's, it's up yeah, to you. motion to suspend sure. rules for a question. Do so I, moved. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Go ahead. Aye. Thank you, <laughs> Josh. <laughs> If it's Dirk's question, can he move to the microphone at the podium? Oh, you can't hear. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a one. All right. I don't mind the podium at all, Josh. So Thanks, Dirk. We, talk, we talk about a system called MTSS, correct? And so in my mind, you're using that to help promote proficiency across all subgroups and groups, correct? So using that implementation over the next few years, do you think we can get to a certain target? Do you have a proficiency level that would rival our neighbors that are outperforming us? So it takes, in my mind, does it take away the differences that Sweet Home has compared to Williamsville? That's my question, thank you. It's a good question. Um, so we definitely will be working to rival our neighbors. Um, the, the work that we have going now, coming out of the pandemic, everybody's thinking differently about how we approach everything. So even how we handle multi-tier systems and supports, MTSS, uh, folks are approaching it very differently. Um, we've done a lot of work uh, with our teams to make sure that they have the right support and the right data points to drive their discussion. And then we wanna see that play out in the classroom. So I, I believe that we will get to a, a, well, I think we already are rivaling. We were like third on that list <laughs> so for ELA. And- um, well, we, we 100 percent. Yeah, we, I, I mean, I go with my I go with my superintendent who yeah. we're looking between 90 and 100. You know, we want to be in there. Yeah. I, I, I believe it could be reasonable. Definitely. Um, it, we have to chip away at that at that target, but I definitely see that being possible. And, that, well, I, and I, I would think that, um, you know, we recognize the fact that, um, you know, looking at our data even last year, that economically disadvantaged is a, if we don't raise those levels that we'll, we'll never um, see our, our overall proficiency go up. And that is um, a key and that's why our DEI work is so important um, moving forward. Um, so we, re we recognize that, you know, we want everybody to go up and, and, um, and so uh, that work is gonna be critical. There were, I mean, the pandemic hit everybody so hard. Yep. Um, and I think, you know, that point of, no, no sliding as far as the scores compared to 2019 and now, or under 10 percentage points um, of, a, of a difference. Is, there's something to be said about that because there are other places where that was not the case. I have the entire state. I, can, I have all the data for the entire state. And, and we, we stand out in, in the fact that we, we had little 
very little sliding as far as a reduction in how we were performing prior to the pandemic and post pandemic. Thank you for all the. No, but they play into everything it all plays in, into each other. So um, MTSS, the multi tiered systems of support, um, we were viewing every student in the district, their data, and not only providing academic, academic intervention, but the emotional and social supports that, that go with it to make sure that they're supported to improve achievement, not just grades, but um, attendance, behavior, that sort of thing. Um, We don't stop until we have 100%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like our graduation rate. <laughs> graduation rate. But I, the same, yeah. And the graduation rate, we have, we're, we're going to continue on until we get to that point with graduation rate and that our advanced regions are equal. And, and there's, then we work oh, to maintain. Right. Thank you for all the work that you've put into. Okay. I mean, data is a tough thing to delve into. And you just have taken it by the reins and run with it. And Thank you. I think we're going to gain a lot from the information that you're able to pull out. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody have any other questions? Thank you. Thanks, Toya. Yes, thank you. Okay. Into like Thanks, Ms. Wilson. Um, so I, I just have a couple uh, slides for, for everybody tonight. Um, I, uh, a big thank you out to assembly member, Karen McMahon. Um, I think we mentioned back in the late summer, early fall that, um, she secured $25,000 for us in bullet aid for, for the district. Um, that money did come in this week and we are, we have used it to furnish our rooms in the AAC and ENL rooms in the high school, uh, our new rooms there, um, which beautiful furniture that's very collaborative in nature and um, very student friendly. Um, we've also used that money to furnish pre-K rooms at Glendale and Heritage and Willow Ridge. So i um, very happy and very thankful to assembly uh, member Karen McMahon. She, uh, we invited her to the district to come see the furniture and um, she's working with Sherry now, her office is working with Sherry now to secure a date sometime after Thanksgiving to come in and take a look. And of course, we'll get it out on social media and all the fun stuff as well. So um, thank you to assembly member Karen McMahon. We also have uh, uh, another thing to celebrate. Congratulations to uh, Fanoon Shaibi, our uh, Director of Human Resources. She has been selected as a 22-24 University Council for Educational Administrator Scholar. Uh, the Jackson Scholar Network out of Michigan State University Co uh, College of Education is for graduate students of color to engage in formal networking, mentoring, professional development opportunities to enhance their career development and educational administration. So um, she is in Seattle right now at her first conference um, doing mentoring and professional development. So um, it's just an awesome opportunity for her and great for Sweet Home um, that she's getting this type of high level uh, PD um, for, for our district. So just a big shout out to Fanoon and congratulations to her um, on, on, this, on this award. Uh, DEI update really quick. We started our subcommittee meetings uh, this week. Today was our family um, engagement subcommittee led by Ray Bailey. Tomorrow, teaching and learning led by Ms. Wilson um, will take place. And I know we have another one this week, which is in my mind, or maybe not. We're just doing two this there's week. There's one next Monday. And there's one next Monday as well. So um, a great, um, why is the word, collection of parents teachers, administrators in the room today for Mr. Bailey's uh, committee to talk about family and community engagement. Um, and just a quick report from Joanne, she said a lot of great ideas that were shared um, in that in that subcommittee meeting today. Um, and um, I was there at the beginning to thank everybody for their work, but to also say that um, their work, they're empowered to do, um, to come up with these ideas, to implement these plans, um, and of course, to report to the board on, um, on what they've come up with and how we're going to engage all of our family members. And I think that goes, um, uh, it's critically important to raise achievement levels here um, because we want to reach all families in our district and make sure they are engaged at Sweden. So You have three this week. You were right. Three this week, yes. Yeah. I knew there was a Teaching and learning is was today, tomorrow's family and community engagement, Thursday is student support and discipline. There we go. So, okay. 
Uh, and then uh, I did send out invitations to uh, members who expressed interest in our building use uh, committee. So um, we are looking for dates. Uh, they were gonna, they're going to get back to me by the end of the week on on whether or not they're um, they still want to be involved. And um, so far, so good. All great responses. And then we're going to roll out a date in the next week or two um, to get together. But we will have um, uh, kind of set this tone for when our uh, power school data comes back um, and, and what that data looks like as far as enrollment projections. We've already seen some enrollment projections from forecast five, which is, um, you know, data that we're expecting to see that we're either staying steady or increasing across the board when it comes to enrollment. Um, and so we're going to present that data to the building use committee, but we're also going to task that committee with looking at transportation. Um, Scott Kennedy will be sitting on it. Um, some ideas for transportation to ease um, our driver shortage um, in a way using the same amount of drivers that we have, but ease kind of the burdens on some of the drivers so we can free up some, some drivers for extracurriculars in particular. So uh, that committee is going to have um, a lot of work to do, but, but it's going to be exciting um, because we're going to make short-term and long-term recommendations to the district and moving forward um, in our buildings and with transportation. Good, covered all there. Thank you, Mr. Feldman. Forward to it. And then um, disappointing, but still want to say congratulations to our girls volleyball team on an awesome season. They they played it out right to the very end on uh, on Friday, lost the, the Far West Regional in, in five sets uh, or five games. Uh, I'm sorry. They were down two nothing, came back to tie it two two and then uh, lost that final game. But uh, what a match points. it was. Yeah, what a match. And uh, I know Mr. Johnson was there. Um, Mr. Feldman and I were there and uh, the crowd was incredible and the girls just put together such a great effort. And so just wanted to say congratulations to them on the, on the record. Um, um, and um, I think uh, you, most of the girls, a lot of those girls you see there are going on to basketball season. Now, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. And then, which started uh, yesterday. The winter sports season started yesterday. So. Questions? I just actually have a quick question. Yeah. Um, how's our enrollment doing? Any increases, decreases? The staying steady. Staying yeah. Steady. Now, that, now that the summer, influx. no, no, now that the summer is uh, um, passed us by, I, I, we're, we're staying steady like we saw last month. So. Okay. Yep. The next wave, the next typical wave is January. January. Yes. Yep. Yes. And I have, uh, if the weather holds true, and I know we've got this chef um, basketball yes. game coming up. Yes. Do you have alternatives? So um, the, we, we are monitoring the weather very closely, not just for the, the basketball game Friday night, um, the faculty staff basketball game, but for a lot of activities. We have a group of uh, our music students going to Fredonia for a competition on Friday as well. So we're monitoring all of that. And um, the chatter has started across our, some of my colleagues. Um, so we're, we're, we're closely watching it. But if we, um, by any miracle, don't have a major snow event Friday, uh, the chef faculty basketball game has gotten tons of hype. Um, Will it the, be rescheduled? Uh, they've already looked at some alternative dates probably in March because that's in between seasons, which we feel like the gym will be open and um, big crowd. But as, as well. of now, we're still on. Still on as of now, but I think by tomorrow we'll make the final determination of some sort. So, and we'll get the messages out there. But if you haven't, if you're part of Sweet Home and you haven't seen uh, a chef <laughs> ad out there, if you're, um, you're I definitely living in the dark age. On social media. <laughs> <laughs> but the hype around it, the smack talk, it's all been outstanding. So, <laughs> Mr. Genestri, if I could just also add, yep. much of that social media is done by oh. Jordan Fitch. Jordan is our new uh, part time BOCES yes. PR person. So, he's been hard at work uh, getting us out into social media. We've created a an Instagram account or as my kids call it, the IG, um, you know, I don't I know, it was Insta. Uh, or Insta, one or the other. Uh, and we're busy working on kind of um, updating content on our webpage. And then we'll look to kind of his order, uh, order of attack is that we'll update first and content and then look to give us a little bit of a facelift. So he's really hit the ground running. Uh, he's here on Mondays and Thursdays. 
He's been to buildings. He was with Mike when he got pied uh, <laughs> on Halloween, but uh, really a welcome addition and is fitting right in. He's he's been great. Um, I, I we're we're thankful to the board for supporting that decision because um, he's taken a lot of the that communication um, stuff and just is absolutely ran with it and love seeing the Instagram account. I actually um, started an Instagram. I <laughs> Again. So, but I apologize because I have absolutely no content or know how on how to use it yet. So we're, we're getting kids, up there. Tell you. Yeah, somebody. Uh, exactly. I don't know how to use it either. So I got to get a tutorial. For, yeah, Musab, uh, we'll be talking about yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Show me the way, please. And I would just like to publicly thank Kaylee for oh, handling yeah. our Thanksgiving for our families. Did all the actually, families get covered? They did. And actually, uh, I was able to, um, I dropped it off in the high school office. So I got to see the whole collection and people everyone went way above and beyond the room was away. full um i think um it just just but i think it should have been like about two bags for family per family is what they asked for and there was a family that had like 10 or 12 bags oh, cool. there's everyone like it was just overflowing with generosity. generosity. It, it was really wonderful to see. Um, so thanks to Pam Hornung was back there with her team, um, but thank you to everyone at Chef for organizing that. And thank you to the Sweet Home community for really pulling through because that's just really, it was very heartwarming. So, and thank you to everyone on the board and district office had a family. Ev oh, everyone who supported the family, just yep. there's so many people to thank. Awesome, awesome. That's all, right. that's all I have. That's it. Wonderful. So some upcoming events. Again, our um, chorus and band and season has started. <laughs> um, next, this takes us to new business. Could I have a motion for consent agenda from A through K? K. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All right, let's have some discussion. First is class placements, <clears throat> excuse me, relatively short this month. Um, nothing out of the ordinary. I, I do have a question. Yep. Um, so do we as a board approve IEPs for preschoolers? Do that we do that for? Board. No, uh, that one is done through a, um, it's That's not county, the, right? It's a county wide yeah. system that, um, you know, we monitor, but it, it's all done through, okay. through the county. Yep. Question. Next is our B monthly financial reports. Stop me if there's any questions. C is disposal of obsolete property. Last time we to make a comment on our Board of Education goals. E is the corrective action plan in response to the external auditor's report. F is the request for proposal driver education. G is the request for proposal elevator maintenance. And that's at middle school and high school? Middle school and high and school. And high school, great. H is our school bus GPS contract. I is our substitute rates. J is extracurricular activity account. And K is the acceptance of the donations for the pool table. I, I'm sorry, I missed. I had a question on driver ed from Mr. Sure, Feldman. Go ahead. Is that two or three sessions? Or I mean, how many for the total costs? Yes. So the total cost is for the remainder of the school year, assuming that we get approved by state ed, because that after you vote tonight, mm -hmm. it goes to state ed for for their approval. We would look to start a session in February uh, that will run through probably April time and then April through the end of the school year. So that is for two sessions. Uh, traditionally, we get anywhere between 35 and 40 kids. Okay, thank you. Okay. And then Mr. Uh, Balani, what we'll do then is we'll come back to the board in July to, to kind of re-up that and then yeah. do summer school. Program. Thank you. When we re-up again, do we have to submit that again to the state ed or is it just one and done? Uh, we just have to, uh, there's two different applications, one for in school and one for summer school. We would just have to do an amendment. There's a form that we have to submit to state ed for summer school driver. Okay. Wait, so 
Um, so, uh, so let's say it, it does get approved by state ed. How yep. would how would you communicate that information to like students at the high school? So generally, Musab, what we've done uh, is uh, to sophomores, juniors, and seniors, we've sent out emails uh, to the graduating classes that said that registration begins on such and such a date. Uh, we give priority to sweet home kids. We sometimes do have kids from other districts, but we do give priority to sweet home kids. Uh, and then depending upon the amount, because it's all driven upon the amount of Sorry, that's a bad choice of words. It's all based upon, <laughs> <laughs> I'll be here all week, typically. <laughs> um, uh, 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 it's all based upon the number of cars that we can get through AAA. Uh, there's four kids per car. Uh, so generally, like I say, we're about 35 kids a session, 35, 36 kids a session. All right, any other questions? All right, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Josh? Frozen? Oh, sorry, I thought it was off mute. Aye. <laughs> Aye, Josh, both sides. Okay, thank you. That was some to nothing. Next, it takes us to informational items. Let's start with Musa. Hi, so uh, we just had our last um, student government me meeting on Tuesday. <coughs> And so we were lucky enough to have Ms. Wilson there with us. And so she told us about the strategic plan about and how she wants to get students from student government to join that committee. Um, and a, a lot of students did volunteer for that committee. Uh, Mrs. Bruce had a list and I'm pretty sure she sent it to you already. And so students, uh, members of student government are going to be on that committee and be working with Ms. Wilson to um, you know, forward that, those goals. Um, some other things that we did was um, we talked about um, we talked about how Spirit Week went. Um, we reviewed that and we reviewed the um, the positives and the negatives of it. And one of the things that we came to the conclusion was that um, we needed to work on promotion a bit better because because uh, every everyone agreed that it the promotion was a bit late. And so it, it didn't get as much participation as it could have gotten. And so that led us to the idea of our social media page, which we did establish last year, but we haven't used as much. And so we decided to create a position for director of communications. And we gave that position to um, one of our juniors on the, on the on student government. And so those uh, social media accounts will be up and running a lot more actively now that we have that position in place. Um, some other things that we did was um, we talked about different like ideas for different events that we had, pretty much the same things that I've mentioned multiple times. The biggest thing that we're working on are the winter carnival and um, the winter dance and things of that nature. And then this was the first meeting that our that we had both our senators and our committee chairs. So we gave the committees time to break up and form one goal. And um, we talked about, we let them, to be honest, we ran out of time, so we didn't get to um, talk about um, what the goals were, but they're sending in their goals throughout this week. There are multiple committees that are having meetings with certain people, like our athletics committee is having a meeting with the AD on um, Thursday. Our environmental action committee is meeting this week to talk, to discuss a potential a trip to Central Kitchen like we did last year. Um, and we talked about student safety and how we can kind of rebrand what student safety is. The Student Safety Committee does because um, student safety is often thought about as like security and stuff like that. And But we talked about how we don't necessarily have as much input in that section. But we also realized that student safety also includes getting to class on time and being where you're supposed to be when you're supposed to be there. So we kind of thought of the idea of incentivizing that um, and like um, trying to reward people, kind of, kind of like the Pride of Sweet Home initiative that's going on by, through Ms. Pellucci, Ms. Reed, and uh, Ms. Schultz, kind of adding on to that and incentivizing getting the class on time, you know, having good attendance, things of that nature. Um, so we're working closely with Mrs. Bellucci and Mrs. Schultz to kind of bring that into fruition. And um, we're also working on establishing our judicial branch, which has been in the works for 
the last five years, <laughs> but we um, created a bill that we're finalizing. It should be done by the end of the week. And in our next student government meeting, we're going to be voting on that bill. And if all goes well, then by our next meeting, we're going to have a judicial board, judicial branch, and um, we'll get that ball rolling as well. Can I ask what what is the role of the judicial branch going to be? Yeah, that's a great question. So the the role of the judicial judicial branch in our um, uh, group is that um, it's kind of a, an accountability branch for um, student government members because often we hear um, both senators and ex executive branch people co uh, complaining that they, they don't necessarily see what they contribute to the group as a whole. So we want to make sure that committee chairs are doing their jobs in assigning tasks um, and senators are doing their jobs in carrying out those tasks. And um, the executive branch is doing their job in communicating and overseeing all the different things going on. And so the way we decided that that would happen was by creating an honor board, which would be our judicial branch um, that would be created through teacher recommendation and senator voting. And after and once the honor board is voted in, they'd be meeting like biweekly or um, monthly to discuss the different tasks that each person was supposed to do and whether or not they followed through with it. And um, if they have, then that's great. If they haven't, then um, the people that haven't been doing their tasks would be, um, you know, given um, some direction in what they're supposed to be doing. That is super cool. Yeah. That's super cool. That's like you guys made a, like a whole government. Ah. <coughs> I'm a political science nerd, so you guys are doing great. Uh, yeah, that's all we did. Great. Thank you. Peter. Okay, um, I met with uh, Ms. Della Plant this past week. Um, we have a PTA meeting on Thursday. Um, next week, they're having a kindness week that is going to end with a turkey trot at one o'clock on the 23rd. Um, so I'm hoping that I can make it to that. Um, and then one thing I did want to mention is I give kudos to one of our students. Uh, Megan Orjek, uh, she's a junior. Um, she attends the Kenton CTE Center um, in the Health and Careers Program. Um, she was elected the junior class president of Skills USA at her center. Um, that's an organization that's a partnership between students, teachers, and industry that work together to ensure America has skilled workforce. Um, talk about how um, our CTE programs are have the up-to-date tools to make sure that the students can get into the workforce when they're ready to. Um, so Megan, is, as the president of the junior class, traveled to Albany for the New York State Skills USA Leadership Conference last week. So I thought that was kind of cool. I got that information from one of my BOCES teachers, fellow BOCES teachers. So I thought I'd send it. So it was, wow, a student freedom student. So it's good to her, good for her. Nice. Um, just a couple of things after um, I know we talked about the Purple Heart thing last week, um, the day after on Wednesday, the town of Amherst became a Purple Heart community. And I went to that one just to see a little bit about what it was about. I did send everybody a quick picture about that. And the only other thing was, as Mike mentioned, the, the girls volleyball. It was it was a great game. I had a front row seat. Um, girls played hard. It was too bad. I mean, I was just, I know it, it hurt for them at the end, but it was still it was, it was great to watch. I'm great to watch them make the comeback. And and how excited they were as they went along. So that's it for me. Mr. Jones, the, I know you saw the star point um, had that yeah. gentleman over and um, I've heard nothing but rave reviews. They did a whole ceremony over there when they put that on the wall. So um, we're, if he wants to contact me or whatever. He we said he yeah. sent a letter to Derek, but he, it may not have even gotten okay. there yet in okay. the mail. But yeah, actually I had coffee with him again this morning. And the picture that you sent over, he goes, yeah, I was just at Star Point. I go, yeah, I know. He goes, how do you know? <laughs> I have context. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was, a, cool. but yeah, he, he was he was real happy with how that went with them too. So. Okay, thank you. Kaylee. So I attended the PTSA meeting um, last Thursday at the high school. I was um, over Zoom um, and they are doing quite well this year. Um, they raised uh, $2,700 from the basket raffle and book sale at the craft fair, um, which they always say they talk in scholarships. So that's like two and a half scholarships for them right there. Um, they also mentioned that, and I just want to double check the basketball game, the chef basketball game, are they still looking for gift cards? Oh yeah. 
Still yeah. looking for gift cards and also the meat raffle is also still looking for gift cards. So if anyone has any to donate, um, they would really appreciate that. Um, they're also um, looking for a teacher rep currently, which uh, Mr. Baker is on that. Um, so after um, the brick installation, I missed a part where they were talking, we, were, we had a really bad connection. Um, has, have bricks been installed for the, okay. I. So the first, so the first round of bricks have been installed. Uh, they were unveiled at, I think it was homecoming it was, um, yes. which was October, September 24th, September, September 20 something. Uh, they are in the midst of selling another round of bricks uh with an installation date to be determined yes um so after they paid for installation they are currently um over seven thousand dollars um so uh yeah so again in scholarship this is four scholarships um it's it's more than four but this sets them up next year to already be able to offer four scholarships which is one more scholarship from last year and these are twelve hundred dollar scholarships each um, so this year they will be offering four scholarships and they are already in a place where they can ensure they offer four next year as well. Um, Mr. Baker also talked about how that he's working on the winter ball um, and that December 8th is parent teacher conferences um, and they would really like um, parents to be there, students to be there. Um, that's December 8th. Uh, and then he mentioned the um, the Friday's snacks for the senior lounge, the adjustable senior lounge, that that seems to be going over pretty well. So uh, yeah, they're doing really what are they well. Doing? Are they sending snacks to uh, A specific administrator is, is procuring uh, snacks on Fridays for the seniors in the senior lounge, and it seems to be going over very well. So. I brought up my extra Halloween candy, so <laughs> I grab that up quick. <laughs> Yep, and on, myself, <laughs> on Thursday, uh, we have a legislative meeting um, that I will be attending. And I saw legislative that. breakfast Saturday. Oh, Keep you posted, weather uh, pending. Yeah. Yeah. I this sent a, a message out week. this morning asking about it, and I didn't get a response yet on that. But <laughs> yeah, the weather it's doesn't look good. <laughs> I'll keep it posted. I hear it. Anything else? Nope. Will they send out if that does get canceled? They'll I'll, send. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll text the whole board about that. Josh, not to forget you. How's your week been? It's been good, Marianne, but quiet from the Board of Education perspective. So I don't have anything to offer. Thank you, though. Okay, thank you. Amy. Um, I attended the uh, Girls Ballet Bell game virtually. Um, very exciting game. Um, I, I couldn't get out there, but I had it on at work. Um, my husband had it on at work. <laughs> it, it, it was uh, ra rather exciting. Um, everybody in my office kept going, how are they doing? How are they doing? How are they doing? <laughs> I'm like, shh, I can't hear, shh. Um, so I did, I did attend that, like I said, virtually. Um, I, got, I finally got the minutes for last week's PTSA meeting that I missed because I was at the other volleyball game. <laughs> um, they are, they're doing really well. They're up to 104 members. They are um, getting ready to have a Panera fundraiser night on November 30th, four to eight. So look for that to be blasted out there on social media somewhere. Um, conferences are coming up. The mindfulness at lunches has started to get better from what I'm understanding from what they're telling me. Um, the counselors have gone in and, and things seem to be, kids are starting to get good habits and it's it's starting to, to really kind of do what it's supposed to do. So it, it's, they've struggled with it, but I, I keep telling them, stay the course, stay, stay the course. course. You, you know what your end goal is and stay the course. I was able to witness it um, last week and um, a lot of adults in the room with, that are helping out, which is fantastic. And I am, um, she didn't know I was there, but Ms. Popovic led it. Um, and it, you know, it, it, there's a routine now, I think to it. And I think it's working. So. And I, and I, you know, that's what I told him. I said, you know, when, when it all started and kids were, were upset and parents were, were getting, you know, back and forth, they were getting information from their kids and you know, 
kids are dramatic. Um, but, you know, I, I said, you got to let give it time, give it time. And anytime I spoke to a parent or a student that was complaining about it or whatever, um, to give it time. If you're doing what you're supposed to do, it, it really isn't, it really won't matter much. So uh, I, I'm, I'm happy to hear that it's progressing in the way that they're looking for. So that's good. Um, I did happen to, in their notes, it did say that there won't be a ski club at the middle school because they don't have any um, enough people to supervise. I thought that was a little disappointing. Yep, that's a thing. I have a disappointed sixth grader. Aww. I don't ski, so I can't, but, um, but yeah, that was, I thought that so it was- it wasn't a busing issue, it was a supervision yep. issue. Yeah, so that's, that was a little disheartening um, to see. I mean, I know we, we have busing issues for a lot of the, the clubs and things, but I was like, oh, that something that- usually like a- That's a charter bus. bus. That's a charter bus. They never yeah. really yeah. use our school buses. But- They can't fit the equipment out. <laughs> but even with that, like it wasn't the busing issue, it was staffing. And I thought that was disappointing. So other than that, um, I don't have anything else right now. Okay, thank you. Um, let's see. So I had my meeting, my monthly meeting Mary with Ann. Mr. Sorry, I just want to, sorry, I'm a little bit delayed. So I apologize for jumping on your conversation. With okay. clubs, ski club, does that have to be a sweet, that has to be a sweet home employee, unlike coaching, correct? I don't think so. I, it doesn't have to be a sweet home Oh, from yeah. a club, it's, it's Josh. It's probably I'd have to look. I don't have it committed to memory. It's probably contractual um, as far as the yeah. stipend goes. So I'd have to look at it a little bit more closely. Yeah, I just got to think there might be people on the community who might want to run it, if, especially if there was a stipend. Uh, yeah, I think we'd have to look at it a little bit more closely. I don't know off the top of my head. Is there a point where? If they're good, if somebody does, if you find that somebody else can do it, is there like a cutoff by a certain time to run the club? I, I don't know. Don't you know? know? Yep. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Josh. Um, so I had my meeting with Mr. Perry, a lot of good discussion yeah. there. And the big thing, um, Heritage Heights had their PTA meeting. And the one time I did it virtual, they brought the dogs. <laughs> Christina brought the dogs. They will be starting the um, program over at Heritage Heights. So they're going to get a schedule down and just to see those dogs makes your heart relax. So um, I'm glad they're getting it too. And that is all. So on Instagram today, one of the dogs was getting a, uh, her picture taken for the yearbook. <laughs> they the dogs are in the yearbook. Do they have their own Facebook account or anything like that? There's, a, there's an Instagram one. I'm yeah, not sure if I knew they had something. Yeah. All right. And that takes us to personnel teaching and administrative. Um, could I have a motion to approve one teacher and administrative and two is going to be um, service? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Any comments, concerns? All in favor? Aye. 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 There's Josh with the aye. Could I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Do I have second. a second? Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 And we will Aye. not be returning. Thank you, Josh. And we will not be voting anymore.